Good morning, one and all. Hey, you're here. That's good. What a privilege it is for me to be here today with you. Uh, Pastor Kenny and his family are down in Texas. Um, they went to see Caleb and are celebrating with him. Uh, most of you know he's in the Air Force now and God is doing good things in and through him. So today is a good day for me because it's been a while, as many of you know, since I've had the privilege of bringing God's word. And that is what I hope to do today. That it's not me speaking, but it's him. Let's go to God in prayer, and we'll let him take over. Father, we come to you humbly, praising you for uh, being a perfect God. What a joy it has been to be here today to, to celebrate you, Father, to worship you through words, through actions, Father, through uh, everything that happens. We pray that you receive um, the, the intended blessing from us. God, we are looking forward to your word today. I pray that you bring it, Father, that you convict with it and that your Holy Spirit runs rampant through this room. God, may we all be changed today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You've seen the commercial, you've heard the slogans, and by golly, you've even made that part of your life. Now, you're thinking, wait a minute, I've never been to Las Vegas. No, but you've been other places. You've gone to different places, you've been in different circumstances, and you're thinking, you know what? If nobody sees what I do, and I don't tell anybody what I do, I can have all the fun I want. Society is trying to teach us that it's okay to be somebody you're not supposed to be, that as long as you do it in secret, everything will be fine. So my question, one of my many questions for you today is this. Who are you when nobody's watching? How do you act when you're around your spouse, around your kids, around your best buds, around your church family? Are you a different person in all of those circumstances? Today what we're going to do is we're going to dig into God's word and see what it means to honor him. How do we honor God and what happens when we do choose to honor him? Honor is something that is very difficult. Uh, there, there's a definition. I'll explain uh, what it says, and then we'll go on from there. The word honor means high esteem, a privilege to regard with great respect, to fulfill an obligation or keep an agreement. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we then go into an agreement or make a commitment to live our life the way that he desires. It doesn't end when we accept him, but it's just the beginning. And there's so much that he wants to do and accomplish through us, and therefore it, re it requires a commitment on our part. So when we start talking about honoring God, it's something that we need to take very seriously. Back in the early 1900s, there was a man by the name of Eric Little. Eric Little was... He was born in China, his parents were missionaries there, and he had a, a great beginning to his life. Challenging yet rewarding, he saw the value of, of knowing God through his parents' life and, and through things that took place there. And as he grew up, he went to college. He went to Edinburgh University where he studied science. And while he was there, he found out that he was pretty athletic. He could run fast, he was very good in track and field running short sprints. He was also good at cricket and playing rugby and doing various things. And so he decided that he wanted to make that part of his life as well. Well, in 1923, he ran the fastest time trial in the 100-yard dash in the history of the country of Great Britain, which made him a really good candidate for the Olympics that were taking place the next year. So he trained and he prepared and he got himself ready so that in 1924 he could run the race that God had created him to do. But the only problem is this. When he arrived at the Olympics, he found out that the time trials, the preliminaries, were held on a Sunday. And he valued his time with God more than he valued his running speed and winning a gold medal. And so he bowed out and he chose not to race in the 100 meters. Now you're thinking, but that's what you trained for. That's what you wanted. That was your goal. But Eric Little had more in mind. 
You see, he knew it was more important to serve God than it was to serve himself. And so on that Sunday morning when the time trials were being ran, he was in a local church preaching God's word. He was honoring his commitment with his Lord and Savior. So in doing so, he missed out on his opportunity to do that. However, he had an opportunity to run in the 400-meter race. And yes, I know I said yard and meter. In Great Britain, they actually ran yards, but in the Olympics, it was meters. So you can judge me on that later. I'm kidding. So the 400 opportunity came up. Now realize there's a huge difference between a 100-meter sprint and a 400-meter sprint. One is all you've got and in 100 meters, you're finished. So it's a whole different technique. You start fast, you end fast. With the 400, it takes a measure of endurance as well. So you have to be fast, but you also have to conserve enough energy to be able to finish strong. Well, that wasn't what he was prepared for. And yet in spite of that, he ran in this race. And not only did he win the gold medal, he set a world record. You see, I truly believe, and I hope that you will at the end of this day if you don't already, that when you honor God, God will honor you. Now, that doesn't mean that's the reasoning behind doing things for God's purpose and His will. Well, if I do this, then God's going to give me, or God's going to do this through me, or God's going to allow this to happen. God chooses to honor and bless us whenever we honor Him. So we start talking about this honor concept. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. First of all, it's a challenge. It's not always easy to honor God. Sometimes he asks us to do things that aren't very comfortable for us. It's like, wait a minute, I've never done that before, God. Or, are you sure you want me to do that? Or, God, you're asking me to give up something that I'm really passionate about, something that's a big part of my life, but, but God, you really want me to do that? Sometimes honoring God is not an easy thing to do. When I asked Eric Little after his race how he had the stamina to win the race, and he said, well, he said, the first 200 meters I ran as hard as I could. And then he said, the second 200, God helped me run even faster. God will provide what you need whenever you honor him. Malachi chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says this, And now this admonition is for you, O priests. If you do not listen, if you do not set your heart to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you. And I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not set your heart to honor me. Now, when we start talking about priests, the story for our day is going to take place in 1 Samuel chapter 2 of a priest by the name of Eli. God chose Eli to be the priest for the people. Now, understand this when you talk about a priest, a priest is someone who intercedes on man's behalf. In other words, if, if you've done something wrong and you want to go before the Heavenly Father to receive forgiveness, the priest would help you do that. Back in Old Testament times before Jesus came, they would offer sacrifices and there were very specific steps that needed to take place in order for that to be a ple pleasing to God. And so God said, here's how I want you to do it. I'm giving you a priest to help you do it correctly. Well, as we look into the New Testament... After Jesus comes and he becomes our high priest, it says that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. And so in a sense, we don't need somebody to mediate for us anymore. We can go to our Heavenly Father anytime about anything, and he is there and will listen. We can receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. So this scripture starts talking about the responsibility of a priest about honoring God, about following His rules, about doing things His way, He's talking to us too. See, He wants us to honor Him in the things that we say and we do. He takes it very seriously. Let's take a look in 1 Samuel chapter 2, and we'll learn about Eli and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Now, those are kind of funny names. Maybe their dad had a sense of humor. But in biblical times, there are names that are very different than ours today. But he had two sons. And while he was being the priest, he allowed his two sons to have certain responsibilities. 
They had certain jobs during these sacrifices and during these times of asking for forgiveness. Let's pick up in verse, uh, verse 12 of chapter 2. Excuse me for just a moment. Mm, much better. It says, Now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. Let's stop right there for just a second. Those of us who have been blessed with kids... The last thing you want to hear anybody say is that your kids are worthless, let alone that it's coming from God or it's coming from people who are followers of God. We have great things that we want to see our kids accomplish. We want them to act a certain way. We want them to live up to the last name that they have. But it says right off the bat, these two boys weren't worth much. Let's read on. The custom of the priests with the people was that when any man offended, offered a sacrifice... The priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand. And he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast. For he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. And if a man said to him, No, you must give it now, and if not, I will take it by force. Thus the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord. For the men treated the offering of the Lord with contempt. So here we have God saying, Listen, this is the way that I've set things up. Here's the order of how it's supposed to take place. You are abusing the position that I've put you in. Instead of it making, make, turning it into a sacrifice to God and offering what is supposed to go to Him and receiving only a small portion, they decided that wasn't enough for them. So they started creating their own rules. They started bending God's rules so that they could enjoy more of the take, if you will. As parents, we raise our kids to know right from wrong. We hope that they catch on as they grow up. They'll make mistakes because they're not perfect, but neither are we. But when we raise our kids, we have certain expectations. First of all, we want them to love the Lord as we love the Lord. But if they don't see that through the actions and hear through the words that we utter that God is important, that relationship with Jesus is the most important thing in their life, then chances are they won't heed to that as well. You see, they need to see us with our Bibles open and our quiet time with God. They need to see us whenever we sacrifice our time or sacrifice something that we have in order to be able to help someone else. Do they see Jesus in the way that you live? Are you honoring God before your kids? Let's look at verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he kept hearing all that his sons were doing to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who were serving at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear that the people of, of the Lord are spreading abroad. If someone sins against man, God will mediate for him. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of the Lord to put them to death. So instead of things getting better, things were getting worse. Eli says to his boys, he said, listen, boys, I'm hearing a lot of bad things about what you're doing. Why are you doing this? You know that it's wrong. You know that you should change. And yet they weren't changing. They weren't doing things as they were instructed. But Eli didn't carry it any further. He didn't punish them. He didn't guide them in the way that they should go. He merely uttered words hoping that it would work. Verse 27, And there came a man of God to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, when you hear those words, what's coming next is important. Did I indeed reveal myself to the house of your father when they went in Egypt subject to the house of Pharaoh? 
Did I choose him out of all the tribes to be my priest, to go up to the altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? I gave to the house of your father all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then do you scorn my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded for my dwelling and honor your sons above me by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of my offering of my people, Israel? Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days are coming when I cut off your strength and the strength of your father's house, so that there will not be an old man in your house. Then in distress you will look with envious eye on all the prosperity that shall be bestowed on Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. God goes on in the next few verses to tell him that both of his sons are going to die on the same day. We look back in scripture and we can find various instances where people have chosen to honor God or they have not chosen to honor God. Think about Job. God gives Satan complete control in the situation. He said, you can do anything you want to Job, but you cannot end his life. And let's see if he still honors me. Let's see how he responds. And sure enough, he he lost his possessions. He lost his wife. He lost his kids. He lost everything. And yet he still chose not to blame God, but to honor God through that situation. Let's look at honor in in different ways. You have Noah... (laughs) God says, I want you to build an ark. And he didn't even know what an ark was, let alone build one. It had never rained before. And yet God says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build this boat to these specifications. Because someday you're going to need it. The people around him thought, you must be crazy. They didn't even know what rain was. You're spending all this time and all this effort building something that you'll never need. Well, you know how the story goes on. We can see other situations. You know, look at Joshua and and Jericho. The city of Jericho was surrounded by huge walls. They were extremely thick and very tall, and nation upon nation tried to conquer the city, but the walls kept them safe. And yet God says, I'm going to give you that city, and here's how. You're going to march around it, you're going to play instruments, and you're going to shout, and the walls will come down. Now talk about making you look like a fool. And yet Joshua chose to honor God no matter how much it embarrassed him in front of other people. And you know what happened? When he honored God, when he followed his letter to the T, guess what happened? The walls came down and the city became theirs. Honoring God can be awkward at times. It can be challenging. It can be very frustrating. As we look at other examples in Scripture, you see people like David. David in the story of Goliath, he was just a shepherd boy and yet he knew that Goliath was was basically running God's name down into the ground. He was trying to embarrass his living God and so David said, why doesn't somebody stand up? And because he honored the name of the Lord, God gave him the victory in that battle. God gave him a throne later in which he could lead the people of Israel because he chose to honor God through those situations. Now, back to some of the questions that we want to ask for ourselves. How do we honor God? What does it look like for us to honor God? How do things happen? (laughs) Does Vegas stay in Vegas? When you go on a shopping trip with the ladies or you go to the boundary waters with the guys and conversations take place and and humor gets spread and and crazy thoughts go through your mind and whether you're at work or whether you're at play, you think, well, it'd be really fun to do that. Who's going to know? If we just keep this quiet, we can have the time of our life and nobody will ever know. I'm here to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that God sees all. He knows all. He knows your heart. He understands the desires of it. And He wants us to honor Him. We may be able to hide from each other. We may be able to keep secrets from one another. 
But we can't keep secrets from God. So when your kids are on a traveling ball team and there's practice during church or there's a tournament on Sunday morning, do we go to church or do we take the kids to the tournament because we want them to be on the team? Hey, we're going on vacation this weekend. We'll just take a break from church because, you know, everybody needs a break from church. We're, we're camping and it'd be a lot of work to have to pack up and go home. Or go to a church where we don't know anybody. Or maybe you're at work and you have an opportunity to advance in position, but you're asked to do something that you know is wrong. But all you have to do is do it. You'll be recognized. You'll be honored at work. And you'll get that promotion or that raise. How do you respond when others aren't watching? How do you act? What words do you share when God's asking you to do something, yet the world is telling you to do something different? Dishonoring God comes with a price. When God asks you to do something, He calls you to do something, and you place obstacles between Him and what He's asking you to do, He'll take those obstacles away. But God, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to sell my home and move someplace else. God, I don't want to take a job that has lesser pay because I enjoy the lifestyle that I have right now and God has a bigger plan for you. It may mean making some adjustments in your life so that His will will be accomplished and people's lives will be changed. Not so that you receive any glory, but that He gets it all. You see, honoring God is difficult, but honoring God is self-rewarding, not because of what we think God will give us or do for us, but actually for the self-satisfaction that we have of following our God's will for our life. So who are you when nobody's watching? What do you say when different ears are listening? How do you act around your spouse and your kids? How do you act when you're at church on Sunday morning when it's easy to put on a mask? We can honor God while we're here, but ladies and gentlemen, it's a whole lot more than just Sunday mornings and some seeds. It's about who you are seven days a week. It's about who you are when nobody's watching or when everybody's watching. We are to be consistent in our walk. To honor God means we're the same person at work that we are at church, that we are at home, that we are on vacation, that we are anywhere else that we go. It's easy to become like the people we're around. It's hard to honor God in all times. We had a story earlier about a man by the name of Eric Little. He trained, he had an opportunity to win a gold medal in the event that he loved but he chose to bypass three events. It wasn't just the 100 meter. It was the four by 100, so he didn't run with his team. It was the 200 meter race that he could have participated in, but just like he did when the 100 was held, the preliminaries, he was in the church the following Sunday preaching God's word because that's what he was doing. That was what he was called to do. That was how he was to honor the commitment that he had made. God will call you to do things that aren't comfortable. And he a he's asking, he is requesting, he desires that you do what he asks. It's my prayer for each of you that you can honor God with the intent of serving him and not yourself. Back to the story. Eric Little had an opportunity, yet he bypassed because he was serving God instead. And yet God still chose to reward him, to honor him because of what he had done on God's behalf. Let's watch. The final of 400 meters. Taylor, Etats-Unis. Numero 278. Good luck. Don't expect I'll see you till after the race. What's the deal with this guy, Little, Coach? He a problem? No problem. He's a flyer. He's had two races today already. He'll die. Just swing along, you guys, and wait. Number 
After 300 meters, rigor mortis sets in. You'll pull him in on a rope. Johnson, Canada. Good luck, Taylor. Watch out for little. Coach says no problem. He's got something to prove, something personal. Something guys like Coach will never understand in a million years. It says in the old book, he that honors me, I will honor. Good luck. Jackson Schultz. So where does the power come from to see the race to its end from within? made me for a purpose. But he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Wow, what a great message this morning. Um, I personally hope that some of you guys leave challenged, leave convicted, and that would equal change. I love just a simple message of putting God first. I know we all think we should do, and we all know that, but actually applying it can be hard. Right? And so I hope that you guys leave here thinking about how are my actions looking outside of the church building? Who am I talking to? How am I talking to them? Right? What are my jokes looking like? Am I gossiping? Are these jokes inappropriate or not, and always being careful to always reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ at every area of our life. Amen. So, Grady, I want to say thank you so much. That was an encouraging message for me. I loved it personally. If no one else got anything out of it, I got it. So, thanks a lot.